Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another Mixed Media Mayhem, which happens every Friday, either using an inspiration piece or a recipe. I am also using a bunch of products from Some Assemblage Required today, and this is the inspiration piece we have chosen. It is from Giselle Homer for Hey Little Magpie. So I am going to start out with this stencil, which I received in my Some Assemblage Re Required monthly box for January of 2024. So this is a currently available product. I'm also going to use chipboard wreath that you saw me just sent down <laughs> over to the left hand side. That was also from some assemblage required from the December monthly box. It is actually a product from Dusty Attic, but uh, MK has um, put together a whole bunch of different products, some of which are designed by her and other and then a few items from other companies that she has put in the monthly boxes and um, so that is from the monthly box I also had a title there that said adventure with a little airplane on it I don't end up using that but it was going to be one of the items I used I just um, at the end of it it just didn't feel like it fit so I decided to go ahead and hold that for a different layout. So I am at a retreat while I'm creating this. I didn't bring a ton of mixed media with me. I did bring my media gloss from Dina Wakely in lime and in sky. I think that's sky actually. It might actually be ocean. Um, Yep, I think it is actually ocean, not sky, and, which is the blue one there. And then I uh, ended up with the something borrowed ink pad from Catherine Pooler and the martini ink pad from Catherine Pooler. So I'm adding a little bit of ink that way because I'm trying to get a little bit more of a a little more of a vibrant color than what I currently have. The white of the gesso is super um it I don't know, it's just muting it really a lot, which I knew it was going to um but, you know, I really hadn't planned on what I was going to use with this when I packed my stuff. I don't know what I was thinking. So <laughs> here I am just kind of making it work the best I can. And using those two colors of ink pad really, really helped the whole situation. And I'm really glad that I ended up being able to use those. Now I did borrow the martini one because I, I didn't bring all of my ink pads with me, but I had stuck that blue one in, which is sitting upside down on my desk there. <laughs> um, so I just put that through the stencil and set my paper aside to dry while I work on this wreath. I know I'm going to modify the colors here. I'm going to sponge it all with some gesso. I particularly love this method of applying because with a paintbrush, I end up getting a lot of gesso stuck in the little um, crevices in the chipboard and by applying it this way I don't have that problem. I just tap it off on my media mat ahead of time so there's not a lot of blobs on it and then I just um, sponge it over it and it dries relatively quickly. You can put more than one coat so you get a really nice white color and then um, I am at going to go over that with some other product in a bit, but I want that gesso to set up really good before I do that. So while I'm waiting for that gesso to set up, um, this one has dried. I've, I've gone and done a few other things that I had to do at the retreat. Um, and so now I'm back and I am just using the packaging technique to apply some of the green Catherine Pooler ink pretty much around my layout. Um, and around my photo. So the photo is of the little guy I take care of. This is his 10 month photo and it's him crawling through one of those uh, fold out tunnels and he was having a really good time. He's got an adorable smile on his face. I apologize that you can't see that, um, but for privacy protection for his family and um, out of respect for them, I don't show those on camera. So uh, now I'm just sprinkling a bunch of that media gloss in both colors over my layout just to bring those colors around and I was also playing along with baby got scraps for them for this month um, as much as possible now I don't know that this layout would really count because I do end up using two pieces of full sheet paper because as you see in the uh, inspiration piece there's a white piece on top of a green piece and I end up um, using a white piece on top of a green piece also um, just obviously different 
Greenpeace, but um, it did inspire me to use a bunch of scraps. So all of these pieces are out of my scrap bin. As you can tell, they're all weird cuts. I went and die cut a bunch of stars. You can see the pile to the right there. Um, I die cut the stars out of this and now I'm using, or out of the scraps, and now I'm using all of those scraps to back my photos. I've got some vellum, I've got some previously made mixed media pieces. Um, and I'm just going to keep using those up as much as possible. They've been in my scrap bin for quite some time. My dies are from Dress dress My Craft. Dress Your Craft? Dress Your Craft. Dress My Craft. Uh, whatever the name of that company is, my apologies. Um, I will try to put the names of the products down below for you so that you can check that out. If those are of interest to you, those are affiliate links. It does give me a little bit of uh, um, kickback, uh, a tiny bit of money back in my pocket um, to help support creating these videos. Um, but don't feel like you have to use them if that's not your thing. Um, it, but it doesn't cost you any more if you do choose to. Anyway, um, I am just sitting here trying to figure out the placement of all of these photos. I'm, or photos, stars. Um, as you can tell, I am using stars rather than leaves. I really like the way that this looks. I think it's, it, it's super cute and it's almost like he's bursting through the pile of stars. And now you may be asking yourself, what am I going to do with that wreath? Because it doesn't go with anything that's going on here, but I do have an idea for it. So I took my Stickles glitter gel in, sorry, I had to look, um, in, I think it's just called Sparkle. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's just called Sparkle. Oh no, sorry. It's called Moondust. I was wrong. Sparkle is, uh, the paper glaze that I, or glitz that I had been using. Um, anyway, stickles in moon dust. And I just applied it the same way with a sponge, like I did the gesso right over the top, because I want to give some sparkle to this wreath. Now I'm not planning to use it as a wreath. I'm going to cut the whole thing up. Uh, I'm just using my acrylic block underneath and I am just using my, uh, Fisker's exacto style knife, um, craft blade. It's not exacto. It is a Fiskars, but it's a craft blade and I am just cutting it off. And what I learned here is just cut at a right angle against that chipboard. Don't try and cut where the chipboard kind of the two pieces meet up and everything because it, it doesn't ever look natural. Um, all of the chipboard is actually cut. All of the ends are cut at a right angle. So that's what um, I figured out. So these are going to ask, act like starbursts or fireworks um, behind these stars. So I'm going to cut the whole wreath up. It's going to be just an element that creates even more movement and um, flare on this layout. Um, not to be confused with actual flare that you put on a layout, <laughs> but it's just going to give it a little bit of pop of uh, a burst of energy. I guess that's the right way, way to describe it. So I'm really liking how this is coming out. I'm just using my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive Liquid Glue to adhere things down. And there are some things that I am popping up onto some foam um, just to give a little added dimension and to support where some of these uh, pieces of the chipboard wreath are popping out. I want to make sure that any of the stars that are especially the smaller stars. Um, this big one is definitely that's tucked under my photo in the upper right hand corner is definitely not on dimensional adhesive, but some of the smaller ones will be because otherwise I don't feel like they make enough uh, good contact with the background having the chipboard underneath them. So they need a little bit of help. So here I am using a little bit of that foam popping things up. And as you can see there, it is uh, overlapping the burst and I'm just kind of trying to make it feel natural and not too, um, I don't want to say regimented. I don't, too perfect. Perfectly imperfect is what I'm going for here. Now, some of those stars I did ink up the outside with some of the Something Borrowed blue ink from Catherine Pooler just to give a little bit of extra pop. And to be real honest with you, I kind of forgot about doing that step when I got to the um, large star 
on the right hand side kind of at the not the very bottom but the lightest colored one and so I basically left all of the ones in that color without the blue on it the rest of them do have the blue um, aside from the I don't think I I don't think I put any of the blue ink on the vellum although I might have you never know but um, my inclination is that I probably didn't and I don't have the layout sitting in front of me to be able to tell you for sure but um, I did like that the blue definitely helps things pop and gives a little bit of added dimension to the layout. So I'm pretty happy with how this is coming out so far. This piece here, um, one of the corners of the vellum star is not 100% complete. So just trying to place that strate strategically and then cover any holes between the stars with another star on top and obviously this little tiny one is not even a full star it's like a half a star I think some, uh, it shifted in my die cut machine when I was rolling it through and so that one's just going to peek out from somewhere and that's okay nobody's going to be picking it apart and going oh my goodness that's not a full star and in fact, one of the stars on the left hand side actually has a bit of the branding strip on it, which is has some white and some of that dark turquoise color. And I'm totally happy with that. So no big deal. Um, again, I'm strategically kind of cutting this apart. So some of the um, angles are kind of more uh, left than right. Well, they all go the same direction, but the way I'm placing them, um, strategically placing where the little dots and stars are on these little sprigs that are coming out so that they face the right direction. Because uh, I think one, at least one or two of those, if I had popped them under the star the other way, it would have co covered up the little um, circles and stars on it and it would have just been a straight line coming out and so that's not what I wanted. I wanted to include those little um, pops of shape. So yep, trying to keep that a little bit um, working in my favor if you will. So uh, while I finish placing those, I will remind you there are a bunch of people playing along with Mixed Media Mayhem. We do not have a list of links for you. What we do now is we have an album over in Facebook in the Mixed Media Scrapbooking group. You can go over to that album and there will be... Uh, um, people should be uploading their inspiration there. And uh, if they've got a link, they can actually put that in there, or it might be on the actual page if they have forgotten to put it in the album. Um, anyway, that's where the inspiration is. You can go to the albums and see what the upcoming inspiration is and play along if that's something that you're interested in. And then for um, Baby Got Scraps, I'm not including a list of people playing along for that because I technically am not actually playing along even though I was inspired to use my scraps today. But you can uh, check out my other videos earlier in the month if you are interested in seeing more videos about using scraps. Or you can um, go to one of those videos and there will be an entire link list there. So no guarantees that everyone is playing every day though. So hopefully you find lots of inspiration. And if I remember, I will try to put a link to my videos or my playlist for Maybe Got Scraps at the end of this video for you so that you can easily click on that. All right, so now I'm just getting everything placed. It's, it was quite a lengthy process because there were so many pieces to take into consideration of how they were all going to fit together. But I really like the end result. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Um, but it did take me quite a while just to place things. Normally it's the mixed media that takes longer, but in this particular case, it was not the mixed media that took longer. It was just gluing everything down and getting it right right to where I wanted it. Now I'm just using my acrylic block there on the top of my stars to hold everything in place while the liquid glue sets up. In case you're wondering about that, um, if you're not new to my channel, you probably know I use that my acrylic blocks like a third hand just to hold everything in place um, and sometimes my tweezers as well but um, I don't know I, I guess I'm just impatient and don't want to sit there with my hand holding on it I am inking up the entire outside of the layout with some of that something borrowed blue ink to kind of finish it off and then I remembered oh yeah it's got to go up on this green paper so um, I think I had actually cut 
my uh, white background down earlier. And so, um, which was good because otherwise I tend to work all the way out to the edges and then forget and have to figure out where I'm gonna cut it from. I'm just using a little liquid glue to reinforce holding it onto the large green paper there. And um, I did ink up the outside edges of that green paper with more of that martini ink from Catherine Pooler. I really like how that's looking and coming together. Now, one of my friends had given me this pack of thickers as a gift. Thank you, Mo, for that. And I am using these words, wonderful you. And then I went over to the die cut machine that we um, were sharing at the crop or at the retreat. And I die cut out these uh numbers and letters to create 10 months. Well, I kind of went back and forth. Should I do 10 months with months all spelled out? But I really didn't have room. Even if I moved the 10 up, I didn't have room for all of the word months without going over onto that other star. So I just kind of left it with 10 MOS. You get the point. Um, and I really like how that looks. At the very, very end, and I don't know if I show this on screen or not, that white felt super white for, to me. So I just took my um, ink dauber that I already had out and I lightly tapped it over the top to give kind of a hint of blue to it. Um, that is actually shown in these photos. You, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of blue on it, but it just kind of dulled down the white a bit. That is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions or comments, you can leave those down below. Um, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe as well. Once again, thanks so much for watching. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and enjoy the mixed media that everyone else brings to you today as well. Bye-bye.